Thank you, Dr. Mustafa, and good morning, everybody. I really appreciate uh, the presence of true legends here. My friends, Dr. Anjana, Dr. Arvind, Bansi, of course, and Sanju, Dr. Urmandru, thank you very much for this wonderful, wonderful opportunity. I know Bansi has given a title of, you know, learning from the legends, and I started wondering, are we really, you know, and uh, thank you, entire DICON team, actually. I feel always homely whenever I am here in Ahmedabad. Now, for this particular talk, I do not have any specific conflict of interest, but also I would say that in some of the slides that I'm going to present to you, probably I'm going to mention Dr. Anjana and Dr. Mohan more frequently. A uniform slide that you would have seen throughout the conference, but I want to draw an attention to this part of the story, where we always compare ourselves with China. And we always talk about the Pacific nations and the Southeast Asian nations. But we need to understand that China is witnessing a real drop in the incidence of diabetes. And look at the overall Southeast Asian countries, which comprises of Bangladesh, India, Nepal, Bhutan, Maldives, Mauritius, and Sri Lanka, and Nepal. Mind well, Pakistan is not a part of the Southeast Asian Federation. And what we have witnessed in this IDF data, which was published last year, is this that currently we stand somewhere around 74 million people with diabetes. But we never talk about this, and uh, very rarely we discuss about this in a conference like this. In fact, as Bansi is very passionate about type 1 diabetes, we should also start probably segregating our type 2 diabetics as well. So is our phenotype different? Are our type 2 diabetics equivocally same? We always have talked about the Indian speciality, thin fat Indian. Look at the amount of diabetes that we get with the amount of the obesity percentage that we have. Well, if you really look at the globe in comparison to the Caucasians or black, on the BMI scale, we do not far at all. But then still the incidence of diabetes is high. And there was a beautiful paper which was published by Dr. Anup Mishra and Dr. Sushank Joshi, where they talked about the Indian speciality of diabetes and they they categorically mentioned about Asian Indians being thin fat Indians or mound Indians with a very high amount of body fat. Our visceral fat is very high. We have thin thighs and legs. We have thin buttocks, but we have got very high insulin resistance. The metabolic syndrome is very high. And we do get a typical phenotypical Indian dyslipidemia, which is you know a very high triglyceride level, a very low HDL cholesterol, and a very high small dense LDL. And this is the paper which got published in BMJ long back, which talked about overall, if you can see the Asian, whether they are males or females, they have got a far lower lean muscle mass in comparison to the Caucasians. And it does have a genetic connect. A gene named myostatin is increasingly selected for this. And that is responsible for actually development of the skeletal muscles. And this inhibition of this myostatin gives you a very low skeletal muscle mass that leads to a low lean muscle mass. And this was Dr. Yagnik's paper, beautiful, where he starts talking about existence of diffranzos omnes octet right in utero. And he demonstrated, we all have been witness to this, that Indian babies are the lowest birth weight babies in the globe. But still we have got a very high amount of visceral fat. We have got very three times higher in cord insulin blood levels. And also, we have much smaller body, much smaller organs, but a very high ectopic fat deposition or the organ fat deposition. So Indian babies have a insulin resistance right from the birth. And it starts becoming visible in the first decade of life, mostly. But unfortunately, developing from a thrifty gene hypothesis, which was laid down almost 30 years ago, we have shown that Indians have high insulin resistance, and this is what we believed in, right? But I'm going to talk a little bit different from this concept of Indian being labeled as very high insulin resistant population. Yes, we are, for sure we have. But then, are there any different clusters that we have that makes our diabetes little more special and different than comparison to the Westerners? And so many publications. But to specially mention about this uh, paper, which which got published in BMJ Open Access by Dr. Anjana and team. And I'm very fortunate to have Dr. Anjana witnessing this. And 
correct me if I'm presenting a wrong data or something like that. And also I had an opportunity to work with the team and we published a review article on the unique and new clusters of type 2 diabetes in Indian subclass of the patient. And I was very fortunate to be a part of this program, this paper publication also. And we, for the first time, looked at nearly 19,000 patients on eight different parameters. And what we really looked at, the age of the diagnosis, we looked at their BMIs and the waist hip circumference. We also looked at their A1C or typical dyslipidemia patterns. And also we looked at the stimulated fasting and a, a prandial C-peptide levels. And what we found out is a very interesting data that I'm going to show you. Of course, the highest number is classically mild age-related diabetes that we have. So Indians have four clusters. Rarely in the Western population, we have five or seven clusters, which I mentioned. But Indians specifically have four clusters of diabetes. A mild age-related diabetes is very common. Incidentally common probably for us. Why? Because we diagnose them fairly fine. And these are the people, those who de genuinely develop age-related diabetes, and they are probably at the low risk of developing complications. But here is something which I want your attention, is the severe insulin deficient diabetes and that too type 2 diabetes. They have got a very low HOMA beta, they have got very low beta cell secretion, they have got very low C-peptide levels, and they have very high A1C presenting at very young age. And these are the people who are likely to develop retinopathy as a part of the complication. This is the second largest group or the phenotype of type 2 diabetes that we see in India. Then we have got insulin resistance obesity related diabetes which is called as IROTS. This also presents to you in a very young age but they do have got a combined insulin resistance as well as deficiency coming up together. And they do have got high BMI, high waist hip ratio and they do have got a fairly good beta cell function and these are the people who are likely to develop nephropathy as a very early complication. And the most dreadful of all these three or all these four is a CIRDD that is a combined insulin resistance and deficiency diabetes. They have a stormy course. The age of onset is very, very low. They have got a very poor HOMA beta they have very low C-peptide levels. So they are insulin resistant and they are insulin deficient at the same time and a very high risk for developing retinopathy and nephropathy very early. Remember, Indian subclass of the patients, they have these two common features of type 2 diabetic patients which is mostly neglected unfortunately. And is there an evidence? Look at the beta cell function. Look at the HOMA beta IR in this patient. HOMA beta... Uh, beta cell mass and the beta cell function. If you really compare the Indian population with the Caucasians, you can see the distinct difference between the beta cell reserves in these patients. Even we talk about Chinese, look at Chinese. China guys are better than Indians as far as the beta cell function is concerned. So the racial difference is there, but if you really talk about Asian race, even Chinese are better. So there's something different than, you know, what... Uh, probably we think about. And this is what you know, brings me to a slide which was again a very, very important slide from Dr. Anjana's publication, is an ICMR in dive data analysis. And where Dr. Anjana showed us that look at the cluster one, that is severe insulin deficiencies, IROTS, and the, the CIRDD. Look at the BMIs of these patients. Look at the age of onset of these patients. They are early third or fourth decades. And look at the BMI, surprisingly. Much lower BMI, much higher presentation of diabetes. This is another beautiful European data which has shown that gone are those days where we talk about Indian people being the insulin resistant people. Look at the, the data analysis which is there in the young Indian diabetics. We have got a very high amount of severe insulin deficiency combined with the insulin resistance coming up together. And that makes me to talk to you about this beautiful super hit slide that almost all the conferences we present. A YY paradox, on your left is Dr. Chitranjan Yagnik, on your right is Dr. John Yudkin from Oxford. And they presented this in 2003, Milburn IDF, I was sitting, probably Arvind was also there, you know, in the hall. And Dr. Yagnik, you know, very funnily he says, that if I would have put even one dollar royalty on this photograph, I would have been a millionaire by this time now. But 
the next picture that I'm going to show you will change your thought process. This is 30 years down the line, same Dr. Chittaranjan Yagnik. You have noticed his fat percentage and Dr. Yudkin's fat percentage. But look at the same Chittaranjan Yagnik and look at his colleague again. Really, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure about the guy who is next to him. Maybe possibly Dr. Yudkin's son. I'm not really sure. I have not confirmed it with sir. But this was the picture that sir has shared with me. Look at the change in the fat in the European population. So the reason why I'm saying this is because we need to understand the overall pathophysiology, the way we de develop our diabetes. As far as an Indian subclass of the patient, we follow a completely different pattern of developing diabetes. Rather than uh, impaired glycemic tolerance, that is higher prandial levels, we follow the track of what is called as a higher fasting level, where the basal metabolic rate is a challenge, the basal insulin supply is a challenge. And with the trivial trigger, the insulin deficiency manifests, you know, in a much higher way. And we do have what a dominant form of impaired fasting glucose. We, and that is the reason why we do not stay longer in the pre-diabetic phase. We have got a highest conversion rate. We proudly say, even IDF data says that we do not have that much of pre-diabetics. But it's not a very proud thing. Why it happens is primarily our pre-diabetics, they convert it, we do get converted to diabetes very, very rapidly. So if at all we have to talk about preventive diabetology, you need to treat your pre-diabetics equally, equally harsh. And that is the reason why a couple of weeks back in Mumbai, when Bansi was also there, you know, in an IDF symposium on the World Di Pre-Diabetes Day, we have decided and we have offered that please do not label it as pre-diabetes, call it as an early diabetes so that all the lifestyle changes can be implemented very fast. So a combination of the evolutionary determined factors versus the lifestyle factors. Me and Anjana were talking and Arvind were talking about the epigenetics just now. So all these factors are responsible for these different clusters of diabetes. Last two minutes, I'll be talking to you about the clinical implications. It's good to know about the clusters of type 2 diabetes. But are there any clinical implications of it? Yes, we do have. Because if you understand the subspecification of your diabetics, especially type 2 diabetics, that will give you a better choice to offer a better, better therapeutic approaches. Because we always, being the diabetologists, believe in delaying the insulin take, you know, initiation. And this paper by Dr. Surendra Borgharkar has shown that even though you step up the oral glucose lowering agents, the glycemic control doesn't improve. So we need to understand the need for early aggressive management with the correct therapy, especially when you are choosing your different subclusters of type 2 diabetes. And hence, rather than following the Western guidelines, I strongly believe and I really appreciate the efforts of RSSDA and Endocrine Society that we should have a specific India-specific guidelines. And in a quest to that, Dr. Anup Mishra has published this beautiful paper and he suggested that insulin needs to be really a therapy of choice very early in the patients as right at the stage two level. That is the most important message that I want to give. So friends, when we talk about clusters of type two diabetes, I need to tell you that yes, we do have got different clusters of diabetes. Yes, we do have got different phenotypes of different types of diabetes. But what is most important thing, you need to choose and diagnose your patients very early so that in the patients, those who need an early initiation of insulin can be easily picked up and we can easily offer them that choice of the therapy at the right time, which will save a lot of other challenges. Guidelines, we need India specific guidelines to follow for our population. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I really appreciate the presence of everybody.